Hi, I'm Bob, author of the online course, Become a Photoshop Expert in a Day by Mastering Layers. Do you want to make an image look a little more interesting? Create a rough or torn border around it. You've seen this effect, usually when the design is informal or exciting. There are several techniques to do it, so I'll show you what I think is the easiest and fastest method. And I'm going to put a border around it kind of about that big, and that's also going to crop out my kayak paddle there in the lower right corner. So the first thing you want to do is get the default colors. So you see I have black foreground, white background. If you don't, you could just press D on your keyboard to get that. Now we want to go and add a new layer. So down over here in the lower right, I'm going to hit that little plus sign. That gives me a new layer. I want to flood fill that with white. So on the Mac, I'm going to press Command Delete. If you're in Windows, press Control Delete. Now it looks like the image disappears because we have this whole big layer of white. And you can see it there, there's a background it's still there. So we want to create a layer mask. So down here on the bottom, I'm going to click this icon there. That puts the layer mask on. Some of these little help things keep coming up and that's annoying. The deal with a layer mask is that it lets you create this effect we're about to do non-destructively because we're going to paint on the mask. That way, if you want to modify it later without messing up the original image, you can do it. There are a couple of other masking options. I'll talk to you about that at the end of this video. Now we'll choose a brush shape to create the border. This part might be a little trial and error because it's personal preference. Different brush shapes will create different borders. Depending on what version of Photoshop you have, you may or may not need to load the older brushes it used to have. For a reason unknown to me, Adobe decided to remove the libraries of really good pre-made brushes, but you can easily add them back. I'll show you how. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the window menu and then I'm going to choose brushes. Notice there's brush settings. We don't want that. We just want regular old brushes and that brings up the brushes panel. Now here's where kind of there's a fork in the road. You see down at the bottom, I have this thing, legacy brushes. If you have that, good, you're golden, and we can you can just go on to the next step. If you don't have that, I want to show you how to bring that back in. That's the thing I said before that, I don't know why Adobe removed them. So in the upper right corner, you want to click this hamburger menu, and you see down over there, choose legacy brushes. I don't want to do that because if I do that on my machine, it's going to add them in twice. So you can just do that on yours. So what I'm going to do is stretch this out. I'm going to open up the legacy brushes and you see there's all these different categories and feel free to experiment with them. There's a lot of really nice stuff in there, but I want to go down to this category called dry media brushes and I want to go down and find the one called Hard Charcoal Edge. So I'm going to pick that up, and there's Brush Settings. And this is where we can do all kinds of cool stuff. Now, you notice if I bring the brush onto the canvas, it's really small. I want this to be 150 pixels. So I just drag this up to about 150. It doesn't have to be exact. Somewhere close to that is good. And I don't need this right now, so I'm just going to double click that Brush Settings, get it out of the way. Now, this is real important. You want to make sure it's the layer mask selected. You notice that I've got this a little border around there. And now, and you see, there's the brush tip. And I'm just going to start swishing around like this. <laughs> Isn't that cool? There's, so there's the rough edges, like right immediately. You see how quick you could do that if you don't have some guy uh, talking at you. And I can just brush all of this around. And if I want, and if there's a lot of space in there, I could just switch to the marquee tool. I'll press M for marquee tool, and I can just kind of marquee select, and then press option delete on the Mac or alt delete in Windows just to get rid of all of that. And I'll just deselect. And you see what's happening is you're actually painting on that layer mask. And that's what allows the image to show through. And just to prove it, see there's a little eyeball there. If I hit that eyeball and I make this layer uh, disappear, I can see the whole image. So I'm just going to turn that back on. Now, if you don't 
like what you did, now I just kind of did this uh, quickly and uh, randomly, is you could delete this and start again. This is what I was talking about in the intro about this being non-destructive. So I'm going to, again, make sure that it's the layer mask that's selected. And I'm going to select all, Command A on the Mac, Control A on Windows, and delete. And there's all the white again. I'm going to deselect. And now I can start all over again. So I can just start swishing around and, and doing that. Now, one problem I have with this is I can't see what's behind the white layer. So I might not know exactly where to apply the brush. So let me just undo what I just did here. Here's how you can fix that. Again, making sure it's the layer mask that's selected. In the layers panel, you see this is 100% opacity. I'm just going to drag this down to about 50%. So now I can actually see what's behind it, and I have a fighting chance. And now when I take this and I swish around, so I can really see what I'm doing. So, oh yeah, there's the paddle, there's the kayak paddle, I want to avoid that. And, oh, maybe I want a little bit more of the sky, and I can do this really without any problem. I see exactly what I'm doing. And now when I'm done, I could just take that opacity and drag it back up to 100, and I had what I was hoping for. And again, you say I didn't do it perfectly. I was just trying to do it uh, quickly for the purposes of the training. But in real life, you might want to go over this a little more thoroughly to make sure there's none of these knockouts in there. I said I'd show you another technique. What if you want the resulting image to be rectangular, just with rough edges? Because mine is vaguely rectangular, but really not all that accurate. Instead of swishing the brush around, you can achieve that result of being very rectangular with just a few clicks. So what you could do now is either, like I did before, delete the contents of that layer mask, or maybe if you want to keep that and play around with it some more, what you could do is just hide it and go and do what we did before create a new layer, fill it with white, create another layer mask. So that way you can play around and you can have several of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once again, reduce the opacity to about 50%. A cool keyboard shortcut in both Mac and Windows is when you're using any tool that draws or erases, the Shift key will draw a straight line. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Shift key as I drag the brush across, let's say to about there, I'm going to let go both of the mouse pointer and the shift key, the brush, whatever, and shift, hold the shift key as I drag down there, release the brush, release the shift key, hold down again, and I'll start over there, drag the shift key to about over there, let go of everything, again, hold down the shift key, and drag up if I need to, of course I can go and adjust that. And now let me bring the opacity back to 100%. I can see all that. And maybe I'll, again, get the marquee tool and select all of this and Option Delete on the Mac or Alt Delete in Windows. And now we've got all of that. Now, there is one other way to do what I just did. Again, let me just click that layer mask and delete everything. And what that is, let's again bring this down to 50%, is instead of using, let me get the brush back, instead of holding the shift key as I drag, something else that works in both Mac and Windows is that you can click and then shift click. Here's what I mean. I'm just going to click the brush. That's all I did was I click the brush. Now I hold the shift key down. So I'm just moving the brush. I hold the shift key down and now I click, let go of everything, put the brush down there hold the shift key down and click, go over here, hold the shift key down and click, and go up here, hold the shift key down and click. And then again, I can do what I did before, bring this up to 100%, get the marquee tool, marquee select this, option delete or alt delete, and we've done it that way. Now, another thing with this image, this is on a white background. What if you want the image on a transparent background? There are a few ways of doing this. I will show you what I think is easiest. So I'm going to command click the layer mask or in Windows control click the layer mask. And you see what that does is that selects the blank border 
around the image. How do you know it's the border selected, not the image? Because you see there's the marching ants around the perimeter of the canvas, and there's also marching ants around the image itself. So I want to invert, and I could press Command Shift I on the Mac, Control Shift I in Windows, or I could go up to the Select menu and then choose Inverse. And you see there's a shortcut either way. So by doing that, I know I have just the image selected and not the background. What I have is a selection, but in the Layers panel, look what's active. It's this layer that we've been playing around with. That's not what I want. I want to make sure that it's the background layer that's active. So now my selection is going to be the background layer, not that blank layer above. Now we just copy to the clipboard like I normally would. So it's now the image pixels that are selected. And I'm going to create a new blank empty layer. Hit that button there. Here's a new blank empty layer. Drag this to the top. I'm going to hide the other layers there, make sure this is selected. I could deselect everything. And now I paste. And there is that image, those pixels from that background layer that are now pasted onto this new transparent layer. And of course, I could go and now paste into another program. I could paste this maybe into Adobe Illustrator or a Word or a PowerPoint document. So it's pretty flexible. You have a lot of options here. I mentioned at the beginning there were a couple of other options for masking. One option is to apply a layer mask directly to the background layer. It's non-destructive, but you can have only one at a time. A second option is to do these techniques with the eraser tool directly on the image, but that's destructive, so your changes will be permanent. So be sure to check out my course, Become a Photoshop Expert in a Day by Mastering Layers.